we need to order. And um, once read, I certainly entertain a, uh, a motion to accept. Leslie Yuan, I wouldn't know who's going to be a here. That's it. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the second. a second? I'll second. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, any comments from anybody? All those in favor? Five more. Thank you. Okay, to bring, I guess, Chip up to date a little bit, we spent uh, 45, 50 minutes or so. Um, That's Chip in Florida. Chip in Florida. <laughs> oh, okay. Chip. Yeah, Chip's Chip. My son is called Chip. It's just a letter. We should bring Chip up to date, too. He's probably watching. Yeah. Yeah, so we took a look at the, uh, the lot in question uh, out on Fulton Road, mm -hmm. and um, you know we we had spent some time last week looking at the, the, the maps that were drawn mm -hmm. and things like that. As I said to um, Jennifer and um, it's it's it Phil. Yes. Um, that coming up the hill is up the hill from the lake. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's pretty steep kind of deal. So anyway. Um, let's, let me throw it out to everybody and um, see where we want to take this. Comments? Is there a time frame for the 50% of all? As far as? Um, he has like this amount of time frame to do less than 50% without being triggered now? It's the scope of the project within the project. So underneath the Correct. So the, the variable that we still have to is whether or not the, the septic can be moved or, or if it can, then I'll wear it because it's right? It just kind of impacts where we look at moving it back. Yeah, it's roughly 25 feet from the camp to the septic tank now. And it's actually 10 feet from the structure? With the frost hose, yeah. So you can go back 25 feet. Roughly. And still stand flat. Right. It's 30, I think we had 44 feet to the septic with a 10 foot offset from that, 34. And the camp is 32 feet deep. So. Well, when we look at the power lines, so it doesn't really seem like moving the tank would gain on much, right? Because we still have you know, the, the camp is still going to be limited by the utility pole. Mm -hmm. You can't put on the line. Yeah, what is it, 10 feet off of the line? Or? It depends on what the easement is for that area. Those oh. older ones that go cut for the yards, and not very. Uh, it's just a walking easement, most of them. Exactly, yeah. The but it can't be over the structure, right? Right. Newer ones, they're looking for uh, 8 feet. Eight so, feet. So, Older ones that they have a radius around the wires, so they don't care about the ground. It would just be as long as the roof stays away from them. Um, what kind of line? Like, what type of power line is it? It's not like digital line, it's just a regular line. Well, they got they got one line that goes to their neighbors and keeps going along the side of the lake, and then they got the one lower line that come, you know comes into their neighbor's camp, and then they go. I mean, no high power line. Transmission lines? No, I don't think so. They're pretty good size for lines, so. though. Yeah, I mean, they go to multiple They're going camps, down to you know? multiple, yes. Okay, so you're going to tell me not three lines. I don't know what they are specifically, but it's not, they're not little. But isn't it just that little one that we're kind of in front of 
But we thought that we could come up with a plan that would take care of that by coming off the center of the line, of the, of the large line. So we could change the direction from which that, or we would, it, it would be the potential to do that. Is that for the neighbor's camp? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Tall line, I don't see it no matter what, but that would become too much of an issue, I don't think. With being eight feet away from it, even. You should never be that close to that, I don't think. No, right. it's on the opposite side of the septic. Right, mm -hmm. of the leaf fields, right? Correct. So, Ken, if we moved it back a full 32 feet, so it's roughly parallel to its existing relationship to that uh, uh, side lot line, that Camp Bellasso lot line. So it's not any more non-conforming in regards to that. Um, that would necessitate relocating the tank. I think if uh, one option would be if it was relocated back approximately 25 feet, then you could go for the 10-foot offset and not touch any of the septic. Um, if you go greater than that, you are, you're, you're probably going to relocate the tank, which is not the toughest thing, and it's a fairly simple process. But. And then do the full 32? With your relocate, you're going to go up here on the relocation? No, it's all for the driveway. So it's either, where did you get that figure, 22, no. I was going to say 32 because that would just, essentially moving it back the full length of the camp behind the 100 foot line. Well, I, I was, I wanted to see what, then Kenny was saying uh, 22 feet would still give them an allowable offset to the tank and would not necessitate moving the tank, is that what you said? Yeah, 25, and you'd be able to gain your 10 foot side set back to and get it to be almost a conforming structure. Oh, because you're jogging a little toward Wheeler's property? Yeah. Okay. You'd still be within the 100 foot zone by 10 feet on the front of it, but... They, they would have, could you compute that real quickly just so we know what it would be? What, what would be their allowable uh, square footage if they appeal for a 30% at some time in the future? I know one um, Well, most of the addition would be beyond the 100 foot, so the 30% wouldn't be factored. It would only be if they're trying to do them within the 100 foot to the lake to the front of the camp mm -hmm. uh, seven times. But if they moved it back to 22, wouldn't they gain some allowable uh, increase in floor area? Because as I see it, 22 feet of the camp would be outside of the back zone. On the foot. Exactly. It wouldn't be outside of the 100, I don't think, would it? Because it's 65 to the corner. Uh, that purple line on the back side of the camp is the 100 foot line. Yeah, but if we move only 22 feet, that's only going to get it back 87. To the front. To the front, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying we have to get information from the back and forward. The remainder of this outer, mm -hmm. the 20 this would be applicable for 30% expansion. Mm -hmm. yes. No? Yeah, that, that remainder that's still in the 100 foot zone, they could do 30% on that. Yeah. Yes. yes. Which wouldn't be, I mean, if it was 10 by, how what's it, Camp 20? 22. So, 220 square feet, a third of that. 70 square feet that would get you your some sort of <laughs> landing at the top of your steps. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. It, if we push this back and it doesn't get completely behind the 100 foot mark, there still would be no way, no legal way to put steps in the, on, on that door. Correct. In the front. Yeah, I think I've got leeway for a road setback for entries as a your primary entry, but this would be secondary, it would be an egress. So. 
Well, if you bought the house, if you bought the camp back and turned it, which you'd be within the boundary lines for the two side lot, for the side lot, and you would turn it, and all 100 feet would be in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's longer than it is long. Yeah, by the map. Yes. So if you turn it, you're going to move it anyway. So why not just spin it around? It's on pilots. Now you're outside 100 foot, and he can do what if he wants to put an addition, it's a whole new set of rules. say that was 32 feet long, the, the mm -hmm. long part of the house, and then by 22 feet, 32 by 22. Correct. How wide is the lot? And you'd be 10 feet in front of the tank in the house. Yeah, it's only seven. Why are you that right? Yeah, it's only six. Six feet here, six foot yeah. seven to the yeah. side here. So if you turn it the other way, you could center it more. Right, get the ten feet there. So you could turn it around and have a lot more freedom to add it onto it. And then would you need to move the septic? No, you wouldn't if you turn it like this way. Mm -hmm. So you could write in here. And then you know the setbacks on both sides? You would if you moved it. If you turn it around, you would have to move it to the feet rather than going to the feet. I mean, that's about 30, 32 feet, 34 feet per tank. Mm -hmm. That's about 32. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, about 32 feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 it is now as you roll it back you'd probably be just as conforming mm -hmm. so it's possible that we could just could we leave that just as an option I think basically you guys would just come up with a number they can't be any closer than next to the lake and mm -hmm. it would be up to them to turn it roll it keep it straight because we'd have taken care of it before it came to you. Right, because it was on the on Yeah. And the, and the 30 percent would only be the part that's beyond 100. Right. Within zero to 100. So in other words, if the back side of that building it could be more than 30 percent. Correct. Once you shift it back. Yeah. My logic for maybe thinking in terms of uh, trying to push it back as far as we can push it back is all I can keep thinking about is the, the, the drop off. You know, and I understand that there's, you know, it's vegetated and all that kind of thing, but the drop off pretty much right in front of the house is, is pretty significant. If we can get that back, 
Um, then we have that level land that we can play with to really control the amount of um, water runoff that will eventually make the lake. The water would probably still be, would be going more toward the neighbor than toward the lake uh, mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. There's an eternity up to the mm -hmm. shed up towards the other way. Well, as it is now, it comes off this side and then the, the drop off here, there is some, you can yeah. see some water moving down the slope from the overhang. Spilling right there. feet to the tank that we measure and we turn it and we put the corner just at the hundred foot mark and the uh, 22 foot uh, width to be eight feet away from you know the existing tank. Well that is enough room, it's just you know close quarters. Do we have the eight, I don't know if we have the eight feet though. I don't think we do. We've got five feet right It'll be enough. I think it'll work. It says your pilings wouldn't be wouldn't be putting pressure on the tank. Mm -hmm. Right, the foundation guy would make that kind of that call. Well, he's got no pilings now, correct? Right. Well, somebody's got to put new something under there. No, you, know, you can still use solid to it. Yeah. And how close can you get to the tank with that thing? About four, three, four feet. Yeah. So it would work. It would work. <laughs> All right, are we ready to make a decision here? Or still? <laughs> yeah, like Ken said, I mean, we just have to come up with the distance from the lake and they can choose the orientation and they can put the thing, kitty corner if they want it to. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we see a, a way to, to get it, you know, 100 feet back and without them moving their septic, I think we should do that. The orientation will be there, their purview on that one. And then if they wanted to move their tank or 
move something else they could do, I guess. That was as far as the ground underneath the underneath the present building, they could just grass it. Correct. Well, yeah, that would be a huge benefit on the site to have a nice little yard in the front, right at the top of the hill.
Any other thoughts? I, I want to get clear on one thing mm -hmm. on on the the um, positive note of expansion. If this thing is ninety percent uh, in conformity to the hundred foot setback, what is the maximum amount of expansion that uh, Phil could do that? Within the hundred foot zone? No, back of the hundred foot zone. And the only thing that would restrict him would be the twenty percent lock coverage. And the power lines and <laughs> setting all these things. So he could make well, a bigger building if he wanted back there. Because he's back on the hundred. I don't think having uh, two hundred square feet of the building in the inside the hundred would, would restrict him more than being outside, fully outside, would it? I mean he could still put an addition on the back of the way of the Correct. same size. Yeah. You could limit them going up because you could 10, 10 feet be they can't go up. Yeah, I don't I doubt they're gonna go up. No, you say you know, limit them to the cathedral ceiling in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about a camp with you. Know. Right, well the volume I mean, is good. I don't know why I'm picturing the camp like I don't know camp. <laughs> it's <laughs> just the just the sheet rock ceiling. I'm getting fetched up on something. Yep. If they would if they were to move this back so that 10%, as I said, of the existing camp was closer than the 100 feet. Right here, this part right Yeah. Okay. The, the way it reads is, uh, but that portion of the structure shall not be expanded as measured in floor area volume by more than 30% during the lifetime. Okay, that's pertaining to the 10%. Mm -hmm. But nothing stopping them to put whatever they want back there. With that part, that's this what, other ninety percent. That's what I'm. Yeah. As long as they meet, you know these. Yeah. It's got to conform to the side levels. Right. Or like the garage, they can take the garage and do anything they want with it. Mm -hmm.
and, and maybe a little bit more in the front before it significantly drops off. So we're in the 30-ish flat area before it starts dropping to the water and where we can add to the mitigation of, the, of any runoff. I mean, I could be comfortable with that. Yeah, we're really just talking about 10 feet, 90 or 100. Mm -hmm. The, the, the uh, thing that fix, fixes that is the regulation pertaining proximity to the tank, right? And what, what we're going to use is a figure for um, minimum allowable distance from tank. You can drop that down to five feet. Why don't we use that as an anchor point and just say that the the police can move the uh, existing camp away from the water so as to um, not necessitate moving the tank and having no more proximate setback from the tank than five feet, thereby allowing them to either to drag it straight back or turn it, uh, and they can make that decision whether there's any benefit to turning it and having it completely outside of the 100 foot setback or not. Um, I would just assume for the records have a number from the high water mark to the front of the camp. Not to say the tank would be right behind the camp tomorrow, but I mean that, that could happen. So, so I, I would say we could use that. The 22. Where that come from? There's a number we were not going to run. Yeah, because uh, it was scaled tank, the house was scaled at 27. That would leave 5 feet from the tank. Yeah. So we'd and add... And 10 feet from side setbacks would be conforming. Uh, compute that for me for uh, first for, from uh, leg setback. If we, 87. Would just be 80. 87. Okay. And 10 on sides. You're using that 65 tool thing in there? Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, we still get a number that we know from the high water mark. Exactly. So it's maximum, uh, minimum setback from the lake uh, accomplished by moving it to 87 feet. And that gives them options to. Uh, Turn it if they wish, and still be in compliance with the right. They wouldn't have to turn it to fit in there. No, it's almost right. Back. Right. Yeah, it would be a <coughs> much easier move. I don't know how I don't know the mechanics of that. But. Mm. Is there a, a time frame in terms of when this would need to be done? Then? Uh, building permit would be good for a year if you started, and two years, uh, a year. If if you start within the first year, you get a second year out of it. So how far are they into it now? Uh, it would be a brand new permit. It would be issued July 1 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you get until July 1, 2017 to start. Right. And 2018 for a completion. taken by uh, Philip uh, that kind of contradicts some of the information that you were given? Yeah, so one of the conditions on the building permit that they were working was uh, you cannot exceed more than 50% of the removal of the value. Right. Um, and when their contractor got in there and when they're working with wooden nails, they look at it as the best thing to do would be to rip this gable down, build brand new, put this in, put yeah. that in. So it wasn't somebody that was knowledgeable in the shoreland zoning laws in Maine, which a lot of contractors would want the permit on site, read the permits, know exactly what's going on when you're in that, that 250 foot zone, especially the 100 or the first 25. So that would be um, the main thing that 
contractors that are used to working in the Shoreland Zone or DEP certified people, they would be looking for that documentation, be looking for conditions. Because um, the hammer and nails is the easy part. Who determines the percentage check you? Or uh, real estate appraisal? If it's close, if it's a simple project, um, we can look at it and say that. But on the other thing, once you've exceeded it, so in this case, really all that's left is a floor and two walls. And the reason why I'm asking, I usually threw that down the wells. Yeah. And we got out of it to 51% because the town of wells, which is very strict, so we could, they would go by the insurance company's appraisal to how much the property was worth as insured value. And they ended up with within $4,000, so they didn't have to lift the structure up to meet the flight requirements. Yeah. But if the full code enforcement officer first looked at it, his estimate was that we were. Yeah. And so you're fine line. <coughs> you're fine line. You can use a professional to determine that. Yep. Yeah. State of Maine appraisal. Um, um, the, well, the insurance success. Yep. Insurance value can make a difference. Does he still get that option? Was the exercise that option already? They were looking at it at, at, for a while, and I went to the site with the DEP, and it was really clear that you're okay. way over the site. If he had the right, if he exercised that right, I guess he did. So we're ready for a motion? I think 87 feet is easily attainable. Okay, so we accept or we go with um, Kenny's recommendation to have a setback 87 feet from the high water We have conditions. Four conditions. Okay. Do we want to list those in the motion? No. <laughs> it would be uh, vegetate the site and install water mitigation. How about the idea of power to the neighbor's house? Uh, I don't think you're even into it. it moving it back just that little you, you were not going to get into it. Okay. How about the bowling question? Making sure that if it gets the set, setbacks, is that a condition? The side, side setbacks? setbacks? Yeah. Or is that just an automatic? I I would put that in the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, we'll just list the conditions out. Right? So that's. Uh, just put all the setbacks there at once, 87 from the water, 10 foot from the side, mm -hmm. and 5 foot from the septic. Five, 5 feet from the septic. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know, front door becomes a window. Mm -hmm. It can be utilized, keeping the door and its uses. Basically, they wouldn't be able to do a step in the front mm -hmm. anyway, so. But they could bring grade up. Or they could also the camp back. Be nine feet, and then have the three feet in front of it still to put a little step there and use it for it. That would be their own choice because if 87 is a line, so they could have a little oh. something in the front if they, or if, you know, if they made enough room to do it, which we were giving them a little bit of room there. Perfect. Depending on their movers and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I like to see the, you know, the boilerplate uh, storm on mitigation. Dribbling trenches yep. on the sides, no matter how the thing's facing. Um, they already revegetated for those three trees they took in the. No, front. the points haven't been brought back in yet. So we just maybe stick that in there that the. That's those a second point of it on its own. Yeah, we don't want to forget about it in the whole game of things. You guys made a Right, they went to a walk for that, so they should follow up on that. Or they got a permit from you, is what you're saying. Correct, yeah. They already got a permit. Which requires a revegetation plan by So we already time. got that in there, okay. Alright, so all that is part of the motion. Is there a second to the motion? A second. Okay. Comments? Additions? 
All in favor? One, two, three. I don't know. I'm sorry, Leslie is. Yeah. Okay. So five more. Okay. So, so you guys probably your best job is to touch base with Ken at some point. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Um, questions, comments? I give you an opportunity if you want. Well, we were. Um, what are, I guess? What's our next step? Can we? We were. Um, we'd stopped all work interior of the camp um, while we were figuring all this out. Are we still under that, Ken? I wouldn't want to be doing my interior finishes and relocating the camp. So uh, you, you'd be pulling a building permit uh, within the next couple of weeks for relocation of the camp. And that's, like I said, that's good for as long as you start the first year, you get a second year out of it as far as buying your time. So it would just matter as far as your interior finish uh, when you wanted to relocate the camp. So the, can the existing uh, um, building permit that we have, it, so we can't complete that? So here's what we'd like to do is, you know, everything's been removed, as you know, you've been removed numerous times. Um, we'd like to close off the walls and connect the stuff and use it. Um, of course, doing what we're going to do next, the next step. Um, with the understanding that, you know, if, for example, we put sheetrock in, right, on the walls, that it might crack a little when we move the camp back, right? Is that, the, is that what you're saying? Like, you wouldn't want that to happen? or? Correct. I mean, that would be your choice right. there. So you just come in, uh, uh, you know, within by July one, and we'll get a revision for the permit, and, and then that'll be your choice if you want to. I would allow you to keep working in there, but it's going to be clear that you know you have to relocate it. Right. And so. Okay. Okay. Um, full business. That is uh, code enforcement. Questions, comments. I don't have anything for you. Okay. Um, I'll throw it out there to everybody that uh, Jess has submitted her resignation. And we had a discussion about the fact that she, uh, you, you know, was thinking about it. And that has happened. That happened um, two days ago. And it went upstairs. And so I'm waiting at this point. Maybe you've already heard from Jennifer that. Uh, they got it. She'll give it to them at the next selectman's meeting. Okay. So they'll act on that, right? Yep. I mean, that's, that's as far as we're concerned. We don't have much else Correct. to do, perhaps, just add meetings if that's what we have. Yep. Okay. Town, town meeting board representation, what's that? Is that the new person who's going to be down here? No, that was my request to Brenda um, for some help proceeding with some talking points, if I'm going to be standing at town meeting uh, defending Article 12 and 13. <laughs> I, if I'm going to be representing the board, mm -hmm. um, I'd like the board to help me craft um, three uh, talking points um, that uh, support our thinking on our recommendation, if that's possible. Is, there a, is our recommendation printed in the warrant? Yep. yep. It's a little, it's a little odd. I, I just picked up this um, this afternoon when I was looking at the the um, recommendation is to approve the article as written, but your your what you're recommending is a, an article that has been entirely rejected. And, uh, so you're you're removing the repeal off. I guess you can use that phrase on the floor of town meeting just to make sure there's no misunderstanding about what. The action being so that could be definitely point one. Yeah, that you make that clear. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Good point. 
<laughs> it, it didn't say that the planning board um, recommended, does it? Well, it, it says yeah, that, it does. does it? Oh, excuse me. I wanted the finance committee. Yeah, town council. What were I going to Where are those? Could you help me reinvent the, the vote on Article 12 and 13 that the board took? So um, we're going to have to do it tonight. Yeah, that would be, you know, two. It was close. Three or two, it seems to be. It was three or two. That was upstairs, remember? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I think it was three or two. On, on both of them? No, I don't think it was. Well, it was unanimous on 13, it was three or two. Right. Right.
discussion with the public on November 10th um, in strong support of repealing Article 13 as well. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Boyan would probably say a little something about that. I would think. Who's that? Paul Boyan, he was the one who just kind of. One of the few people at the hearing spoke. Yeah. I was just thinking of the doctor. Um, yeah. And the environmental reason I thought was primarily that this this was a fragile um, area and was a, was an area of recharge to our great ponds and that we didn't want to diminish the water quality in those areas by allowing more development. And the, and the, the information that we received from Ken was that there was a small number, uh, less than a dozen, is that fair to say? I would say because you're looking at um, parcels that were already created, resource protection came on top of it, and they have no other place to build. So I mean a lot of them would be in the resource protection, but they have other places to build. Or it was created after. And uh, the bigger thing is the 2010 expansion of showing the zone that created a lot of additional resource protection. But, right. but um, yeah, that's I mean, that's about what you said. It affected about a dozen lots. It wasn't a chance. Yeah. So a dozen or less. Of them, you said. Yeah. So you would really be no significant as far as water quality is concerned. You can look at it both ways, I guess. No. Um, take a breath. I think it was not the best. I mean, at least I'm sure we'll have our entire day. Right. Um, that's about the only thing that is on our plate for the water, right? Yeah, just the two, two oh, angles. Anything else? Nine o'clock at the school. Yep. Any um, any else for anybody? Right. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay. Are we done? We are done.